how do you develop a presence on Instagram without actually being present? We're going to talk about that today. Stay tuned. This episode of Keeping It Real is brought to you by Real Geeks. How many homes are you going to sell this year? Do you have the right tools? Is your website turning soft leads into interested buyers? Are you spending money on leads that aren't converting? Well, Real Geeks is your solution. Find out why agents across the country choose Real Geeks as their technology partner. Real Geeks was created by an agent for agents. They pride themselves on delivering a sales and marketing solution so that you can easily generate more business. Their agent websites are fast and built for lead conversion with a smooth search experience for your visitors. Real Geeks also includes an easy-to-use agent CRM, so once a lead signs up on your website, you can track their interest and have great follow-up conversations. Real Geeks is loaded with a ton of marketing tools to nurture your leads and increase brand awareness. Visit realgeeks.com forward slash keeping it real pod and find out why realtors come to Real Geeks to generate more business. Again, visit realgeeks.com forward slash keeping it real pod. And now, on to our show. Amid recent class action lawsuits, there is uncertainty among agents on how they are going to secure their professional fees when representing buyers. Kaplan Real Estate Education is proud to present the new Buyer Agency Professional Course. Learn the responsibilities of a buyer agent, how to create a compelling buyer agent value proposition, how to market your unique value proposition, and more in this professional development course. Plus, upon completing the course, you'll be eligible to obtain the BAP designation digital badge. Learn more at kapre.com. That's kapre.com or visit the link in the show notes. And now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to Keeping It Real, the largest podcast made by real estate agents and for real estate agents. My name is DJ Paris. I am not your guide and host today because I have something very exciting to announce. We have a brand new monthly series titled Instagram and Prospecting with Michelle Berman Michael. Now, Michelle has been on my show, and I was so impressed with her that we needed to get her on this network. She generously and graciously agreed to do a monthly episode all about best practices with Instagram so you can find more prospects faster and without spending all day on Instagram. So if you like what you hear today, and I promise you will, please consider investing in one of her coaching programs. Now, to find out which program is the right fit, visit igcourse.com. Again, igcourse.com and schedule a complimentary call with Michelle to see which of her programs is best for your situation. Again, that's igcourse.com. Make sure to mention that you're a Keeping It Real listener because Keeping It Real listeners get 10% off her services. So let her know that you found her on this podcast. All right, guys, let's turn it over to Michelle for this week's Instagram lesson. What are we going to talk about? Let's jump into how you can have a presence without being present every single day on the Instagram platform. Now, am I telling you that you don't have to live on Instagram all day for it to work for me or for it to work for you? Yes, I am telling you that. It is entirely possible. Now, in this very fast world of social media, we know that maintaining a very active presence on platforms like Instagram can be both a blessing and a burden. So as realtors and entrepreneurs, we have to strive to stay super relevant, but the demand to constantly produce fresh content and engage with our followers can, in my opinion, just very quickly become overwhelming. So what you need to think about is, or what I want you guys to think about is, could you continue to captivate and grow your audience without spending every waking moment online? So what I want to talk about is a couple of different innovative things to Uh, not just implement, but really understand in order for you to maintain a very dynamic Instagram presence and being able to also effectively engage with the community that you're building while also granting you the freedom to step away and live the life that you're trying to live beyond the social media screen or beyond, um, you know, what are we posting on Instagram today? So I want to delve into 
the most important piece of this, which is how to create a balance between your authentic personal engagement and your strategic business content. So essentially saying the balance between what are we posting personally and what are we posting on the business side so that we can then create a presence without having to be present every single day. So often what I see is that realtors struggle because they lack one thing and one thing specifically, which is a targeted approach to what we are posting. Um, and that posting content or the content side to it becomes the foundation or the framework for everything else. So what happens is we end up just posting very randomly without a clear purpose. Um, and this is what we kind of call the scatterbrained method or scattershot method. Um, which fails to engage any audience really for that matter, but especially not the right one, um, which leads you or leads to a presence that feels neither credible nor engaging and therefore causes you to have to be more present with your content and in your platform in order to make an impact. So the scatterbrain method, as I, as I was mentioning, it doesn't work, right? And it won't work because if you're failing to define a target audience when you're creating Instagram content, um, it's going to result in a series of reoccurring issues. So not having a specific target audience is really broken or really creates five main reoccurring issues. So let's let's talk through those five things. Number one, um, if you don't have a defined target audience, when you create content, it's going to lead to a lack in, of or a lack in direction for the actual production of content, meaning um, you're not going to know what to post. Therefore, it's going to end up being very generic or inconsistent. So generic meaning boilerplate, meaning you're paying, you know, 50 bucks, 60 bucks a month, whatever it is for uh, templates that just get posted on your behalf or kind of stock photo type. Um, I call them boilerplate templates in my world, but really it's those generic, everybody can kind of use the same templates and just change the name or the face on them type of content. Um, and then that leads to the inconsistency, right? Where you're not necessarily posting as often as you should. Um, it's definitely not consistent on brand. Um, so it leads to ultimately just no resonating with anybody in particular. Um, so you're not going to be able to really create that hyper local or hyper local following that you're really after, which actually is number two. So the second uh, issue that arises when we're using that scatterbrained method is we're going to have a very hard time building a loyal following. So when I hear people reach out to me and say, Michelle, I want to grow my following. Michelle, I want to get more followers. I think you're asking the wrong question because what I think your goal should be is how can I build a hyper local following of people that are in my community that are in my sphere, not sphere necessarily physically, but also but more so, I'm sorry, um, more so passionately or like passion based, right? Like what are the things that I'm into and how can I go build my tribe, if you will, on the platform in my hyper local area, right? So just a reframe of how we look at that. So if you're having a difficulty or a difficult time building a following, it's because your content is not speaking to anyone. And so once we get better at speaking to the person that we really need to speak to, we will build a loyal following based off of focusing our energy and our content creation on growing or expanding our tribe and our community that we're really after based off of who we are as humans outside of it. Um, and then the third big issue that I see is, or the, the third big thing that you'll feel probably too, um, is you'll feel like the resources that you are spending, um, the marketing efforts, if you will, are going to be wasted or feel wasted. Um, because you're going to spend a lot of time and money creating content that doesn't effectively connect with anyone, um, especially not anyone that is actually going to reach out to you specifically and say, hey, you're my person. Um, the fourth thing is differentiation, which is the most important of all of these that I'm going to share with you. So the biggest reoccurring issue is we are copy and pasting what other people are doing. So if you are an agent listening to this and you're thought process is, well, I just scrolled the feed and so-and-so posted a video about this. So now I feel like I have to post a video about that. You're looking at it in the wrong way, right? Because if that person is posting just a random, you know, video about something um, and you just R and D it, right. Or rip off and duplicate it. You're not talking to your people. You're just producing more content to fill the space. Um, so when it comes to differentiation, how do we do that? Right. Let's talk about the differentiation piece specifically. Um, because I think a lot of people feel, well, I'm supposed to be different, but Michelle, how do I do that? So what is the number one way that we do it? The answer is if you can imagine in your mind, a Venn diagram on one side, you're going to have passions on the other side, you're going to have expertise and the intersection of those two things is your content. 
So balancing your expertise with your personal passion, things like gardening, hiking, bowling, um, whatever it is, it can significantly enhance the appeal and the effectiveness of our content, right? Because it's going to create uh, a, a sphere of people. It's going to create a connection factor where people are going to feel connected to what you're sharing because they themselves have similar interests or they themselves have similar passions. So when you're utilizing storytelling and using smart analogies, um, you can truly differentiate your content and cut through the white noise of what everybody else is posting on the platform. So the goal is to engage and find your community and creating connection is the first step in that process. So how do we create connection is the, the simplest way to answer our problem of how do we differentiate? Um, and the answer is by sharing content or creating content around where our passions and our expertise merge, right? So again, if we can connect, we know that we will conversate, right? Because if we're creating connection, people are going to reach out to us to want to have conversations with us. Um, and if we are conversating, we know that that's going to create the opportunity to con to ultimately convert. So um, in order to make the Instagram platform itself an opportunity for conversion, both connection and conversation have to be happening. So if we're just posting those talking head real estate videos or the copy and paste videos that everybody else seems to be making, we're not doing that, right? We're just adding more noise to an already noisy platform. Um, and then if we, if we don't effectively implement the passion expertise merge, and that's our content method, um, again, we're going to fall victim to the scatterbrain method where we're just posting a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But I want to share with you guys a very specific real life example. I think that this will be helpful. So I want you guys to meet Sarah. You guys can't see her, but just imagine Sarah in your mind. Um, she is a real estate agent in Connecticut and has an addiction to houseplants. And when I say she has an addiction to houseplants, I mean it. Um, every time we are on Zoom, I swear she has more and more of them behind her, but it is such a passion of hers. Every client of hers gets one as a gift when they close. And she has a very close relationship with a local plant shop in her town. So when I asked this question and when I was coaching her through this process of how do we merge passions and expertise into our content, we thought to ourselves, well, how can Sarah use her passion for houseplants to create more business off of Instagram in the real estate space. Um, so there are three things that she can do. And I'm going to say all three of these things for you guys. I hope you're taking notes because this is a big one. But number one, you can build a five part video series on moving with houseplants. So each video will address different parts of this moving process, such as what to ask them, what to ask the moving company um, that are that is transporting them when to water them for the last time before you actually move, how to navigate moving with all your plants if you're doing it through, with your car, right? Questions that I, as a consumer, would want to know if I am the plant person and I'm considering a move, knowing that I could then go hire a real estate agent that has expertise in that exact arena, I am building a connection with her on a personal level, which creates conversation. Conversation creates the conversion aspect that we're after. So the first thing that Sarah can do by merging her passion of houseplants into generating or creating an opportunity to generate more business off of Instagram is to build a five-part video series. I call it a value series um, on moving with houseplants. Now, as Sarah and I were writing the series around moving with houseplants, we came up with a whole bunch of other series ideas. Um, the next month series for her is going to be how to look at a home if you're actively out shopping how to look at a home in the lens of I'm a plant lover. So if I'm looking at houses, what kind of house do I need based off of my love of plants? So she herself, Sarah, the real estate agent, as somebody who is an expert in this, um, when she's creating video content and talking about how to look at a home you potentially want to buy in the lens of a plant lover, she's talking directly to her ideal client while also subliminally telling them, hey, you should hire me as your real estate agent if you're in this position or if you're in the position to want to move. Um, so part one of her three things is building that series. And then in building that first one, we create a whole bunch of ideas for other content and other series later on. Now, the second thing is she can record this series that we were talking about with moving with house plants in her local plant shop and build in a giveaway for a plant as her salt, as her call to action. So she can create a partnership with the plant company, um, which she already actually has, but in her call to action, in her captions, she can use that to her advantage to create opportunity for herself as well as for people who want to win a plant. Um, so in doing so, she's creating connection with her, her people, right? People, her plant lover people out there. She's creating conversation through the CTA of if you want to win this plant. And also ideally we're building 
kind of some excitement around this whole thing. Um, and then the third thing there is obviously she's going to be able to create conversion out of the opportunities that she has via conversation. So recording the series in a local plant shop gives back to the local community, shows that she is local. Um, and more importantly, that she knows the area really, really well, right? And is ingrained in the community or sort of pounding pavement in the community. So number two is definitely huge. Um, and then the third thing, most important of the three things is the third thing. And that thing is she can engage in her three her top three to five zip codes or cities on the Instagram platform. So she, she can specifically go out and find all of the houseplant uh, plant stores, houseplant hashtags, plant people hashtags in those areas and engage with the content. Now you might be thinking, well, as a real estate agent, how would it benefit me to comment on the local houseplant company's Instagram page? Well, think of this in a reframe, right? Why wouldn't that be amazing? The reason it is, is because all of the people consuming that content, commenting on it, um, engaging with it, most likely are plant people and also most likely live locally, right? So it's a way for Sarah to get her name out there to build brand awareness, commenting on a most recent piece of content um, and getting her name out there in a very genuine way. People click on her account because she commented on this plant company. They also commented on her. They also consumed it. So they see Sarah's comment. They click on her profile. They go, they realize she also loves plants and that she also happens to be a real estate agent in their area. Now we have a connection and now we also have a conversation. So win-win for sure. So why would we do that? The eyeballs consuming that content, that is the market share that you ultimately want to capture. So what happens um, after we do all of that? So what happens after we produce content in this manner? Two things, connection, conversation, right? We've been talking about that a lot. So um, if you want conversion, you have to create connection first and then let the conversation um, that are going to come in um, on their own actively because of the way that we're producing this content, um, you're going to then be able to go out and seek additional ones in that outbound prospecting piece, which is that third part I was talking about, engaging in your top three to five city zip codes or cities on Instagram. So we have all heard that content that appeals to everyone often appeals to no one. And I've even mentioned that a little bit here. But when it comes to building not just a local following, I'm sorry, a loyal following, um, but also a hyper local following, um, it is even more important that you understand your specific goal with what we're doing on Instagram. And it is to build your community, right? It is not to generate more followers. It is not to have a video go viral, but it is to build your community. You could have 300 followers, guys, and you could be crushing it in conversations, um, you could have so many people that are superly actively engaged in all of your content because you're doing it right, right? And the 300 will eventually become 400 and 500 and it creates a compound effect over a long sustained period of time. So you might be thinking if you're listening to all of this and you've gotten to this point of this episode, you might be thinking, is it really possible for me to make an impact on Instagram without constantly posting or constantly showing up in stories? And does having a strong presence mean I need to live on the platform? And to sum this whole thing up for you, thriving on Instagram does not mean being chained to your phone all day, but rather creating and crafting and then executing a strategy that aligns your professional expertise with your passion, right? So the credibility of who we are and what we love and what we're really good at combined with our passions of things that make us us, things that we enjoy outside of doing that. Uh, and by defining your target audience and engaging with them um, and creating content that resonates with them, like Sarah's creative use of her love for houseplants, you establish a very meaningful connection that is going to foster ongoing conversations and those conversations that are rooted in genuine interest and personalized engagement because she's individually commenting on all of those different houseplant hashtags and houseplant Instagrams and people that are into those types of things in her area. Um, those become the stepping stones to the conversion that we're really after. So remember that your Instagram success, in my opinion, lies in your quality, not your quantity. So you will never hear me jump on here and say, get more followers, go viral. That stuff, while it is cool, does not matter. And there's also a lot more to the Instagram game than just the numbers that we are uh, trained sort of to care about the most. So find your niche, speak directly to them and watch as your presence on the platform can really translate very well into real world opportunities without the need to be constantly online. So I really want you guys to use this as an opportunity to reframe what an effective social media strategy or Instagram strategy could look like for you. 
um, and be strategic about the content that we share. And I will leave you with this thought. Remember that when you, you look at a Venn diagram on one side, you're going to have your passions on the other side, you have your expertise. Um, or the things that you're really good at, right? Your credibility piece and the intersection of those two circles, that is what your content is designed to be. So go find your community, not anyone and everyone. And you guys will see that uh, you can truly have a presence without being present all the time.